Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. We got a lot to discuss. We're back in the saddle. It's been two weeks since we have been face-to-face with each other. Uh, It's nice to be back, though. Yeah. I enjoy this. Yeah. The show, of course, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com, along with all the other stuff that's going on, right? They got concerts. They got, I think, Joel Coy is coming through town. Yep. Uh, who no, he I, just did. Or did. He just did? Yeah, because I missed it. Oh, it was like last week. It was yeah, last week. I was, I, was, I was getting tickets for it before I realized what date it was. Either way, they've got a ton of cool shows coming in town. Uh, oh, what's uh, uh, Tracy Morgan? Tracy Morgan's coming through town. Uh, I've been so, going for a while. So. Yeah. Uh, so there's, I don't know what's coming. There's down. good stuff coming. It's going to be fun. Either way, find it over at tunicatravel.com. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, we're just going to take it easy this evening. We got a lot to discuss, but we're going to have fun with it. Uh, I forgot my good microphone. Never a good thing. So now I'm, right. I'm working with the uh, the wireless one, which we have not used in a while. If if the audio is a little funky, and we quit using because we were because the audio issues. is a little funky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if if the audio is a little funky on YouTube or on the podcast or whatever, just bear with us. We will have it fixed next go round. All is well. Yeah, we got some interesting stuff to talk about, though. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Let's uh, let's go ahead and fire this one off. Okay. Oh, if you're listening to the podcast, leave a nice review. Don't kill us because of this one. All right, just take it easy on us and hit subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how was Disney? Let's go ahead and jump into that. Uh, <laughs> Disney World was uh, there. I missed the snow in Memphis that we got. Yeah, you, you didn't miss much with that. Yeah. Um, I missed the cold weather. That was nice. It was perfect. Beautiful weather. Never got hotter than like 75. Oh, that's awesome. Cold day was like a 55 evening. Yeah, it was pretty pretty spectacular. Um, I So the things we do for our kids. Yeah. I, I was hoping that you would get into this. I woke up. Uh, so the new Star Wars stuff is is at Disney World. Don't know if you guys know that or not. If you're a Star Wars fan, you know that and you were there. Um, so I wake up 5 a.m. One of the mornings we are there. Okay. It, it's got to be the day that we're going to Hollywood Studios. So this is stop. The reason I took this week to go to Disney is both of my kids' birthdays fall in the same week. And I had saved up the money and said, for their birthday this year, I am going to take them to Disney World. Let them yeah. celebrate at Disney World. So, the only two days we're going to be at Hollywood Studios were the days of their birthday because I let them pick which park they wanted to go to. So, when I planned all this out, I knew both days that we were going to Hollywood Studios, which is where Disney, uh, the Star Wars stuff is, was going to be a birthday day for both of my children. So, the first one. I wake up 5 a.m. Feel great. Feel I've but when I go on vacation and I've got this old man gene, I kind of wake up all the time anyway. <laughs> I you know, I just don't sleep. So I wake up, everybody else is asleep. I get showered, I get dressed, I get my stuff on. And I'm gonna go get in line. You gotta get a boarding pass to ride the new uh Rise of the Resistance ride. Okay. okay. And then once you get your boarding pass, then they give you like like an hour window it used to be a two hour window of when your ride is going to be based right. on your boarding pass number. I'm a single rider. I think I'm going to get a boarding pass pretty easily. Somebody's going to roll in here with three people and they're going to say, we need a fourth and this fat guy's going to ride with you. And so I was, <laughs> I was pretty, pretty excited about the possibility because I knew being the single rider, I'm getting in. So I show up, I get to the park, eh, quarter to five, six o'clock, 545, something like that, and I'm waiting. The gate opens at 615. Everybody kind of rushes into the park, and we're just hanging out. You have to scan into the park, and the GPS has to censor you there. And at seven o'clock, everybody's on their phone getting a boarding pass. In two minutes, all boarding passes fill up. Less than 90 seconds. (laughs) 
<laughs> all boarding passes fill up. It's it's kind okay. of an incredible scene. I actually I thought it was pretty neat. So okay, okay. I get boarding pass. No, the park didn't open till eight o'clock. Preface all of this by you're there that early. Park's not open. All the coffee places are open. That's the only things that are open. And they're all slammed. And you're all just hanging. Yeah, but you're here for an hour. Just pick a line. You're you know you got yeah. nothing else to do. I I had a couple cup of coffees. It was nice. So boarding pass is ready. Okay, I'm in. Boarding pass number three. And I thought, well, see, the only thing that really hurt me today was being early because we have a birthday breakfast. It's the only meal, sit down meal that we got this day. And that is like a special breakfast reservations. I had to get 180 days early Mm. place. My daughter wanted to go, but she handpicks this place. And, uh, and it's the only thing I can't miss. And so I go, I'm kind of back there looking at all the star Wars stuff while it's closed. And I find somebody that works there and I said, Hey, I'm reservation number three. What does that mean? And they said, well, when the park opens at 8 o'clock, we're going to call for reservations 1 through like 9 or something like that okay. all at once. And everybody has an hour to get in and ride. And I said, so, because I'm 3, if I'm not here by 9 a.m., I'm done. I can't ride, right? That is correct. <laughs> and so, I sadly... Go on to my little app and I cancel my ride and I do the walk of shame out of this place and I hop on my little boat and I boat on over to the place for eating breakfast and I wait for my family. <laughs> and do I pout? No. No. I I to them make it seem as if no big deal. They asked, uh, did you get a boarding pass? No, nah, it's too hard, it's crazy, wasn't worth it. Kind of played it off like it wasn't a big deal. Deeply inside, I hate these people. <laughs> I saved up two months of my salary to go to this damn place. And, and the one ride. And the wanted. one ride that I wake up at 5 a.m. to get cleaned up, showered up, ready to go. Wait in line, get a boarding pass, and I'm one of the first people that are going to get to ride this thing that day. And I got to cancel. Yeah. that would be pretty irritated. I was, I was a little bit miffed inside. I tried really, and I'm a, I'm a bad liar. I don't have a good poker face at all. I tried really hard to, uh, to play it off. So I was dealing with a little physical pain. And so anytime I just looked annoyed, I was like, oh, oh my knees are just hurting, baby. It's okay. Like, it, I'm just in pain. When really, maybe I was a little it's, in it's pain. emotional pain. And maybe I kind of wanted to hit somebody, but I chose not to. Well, that's that's good for everybody else involved, right? Yeah, they all had a great time, and it and it was a it was a good trip. It's fun. Disney's always fun. We're a Disney family. They're always going to get our money. I mean, it's just. I agree with you. I it, said, the last time place. we went was twenty seventeen. Uh, yeah, I went for like a little quick trip. See, I don't know how to do yeah. that. It's, I mean, it was. I'm bad at quick trips, man. Yeah, when I, I mean, go, ours, there, ours was like three days. We were there for eight days. Eight, eight, eight yeah. days, Gary. Eight days. When I said two months worth of my salary, it was, yeah, you spent yeah. on a diamond ring. No, I spent on taking my damn kids to, to Disney World. <laughs> it was a lot of damn money. Here's what we did in the time period that you've been gone. Okay. All what right, I miss. So you left on Friday, right? I, I flew out Friday. All right. So after work. Friday after work, my mother-in-law gets in town. My wife has to go to some Pampered Chef thing on Friday night, so it's just me and her, and we're talking about documentaries and watching TV and da 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 Saturday, my mother-in-law is still in town. This is the night before the Super Bowl. We decide, well, we're going to sit down on Saturday night. We're all going to watch a movie because my wife is back. She had to work and she had some Pepper Chef stuff and all this kind of mess. So we sit down and we are going to just scroll through Netflix, right? We're going to watch a documentary. Okay. We watch What the Health. So, and this is very similar to Forks over knives, yep. all that kind of mess, yep. uh, which I've seen before. Seen them, yep. and I get it. Whatever. Yeah. But my initial vegetables thought, are healthy. Yeah, my initial thought was, we are going to watch this, and my wife has not gone grocery shopping yet. Oh yeah. So I know what this is going to be like tomorrow when when the grocery shopping gets done because it's Super Bowl Sunday and you know all this. So I've got a bunch of friends coming over. 
I say a bunch, like three people coming over uh, to watch the ball game. And we're doing pizza, we're doing whatever. But we watched What the Health, and it is all about all these different organizations that are basically lying about what you should be eating and the things that are good for you and things that are bad for you and blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And we have, now, not my son. My son is, you know, he's not even two yet, but when he goes over to his Grammys, he is eating yogurt and he's eating cheese and he's eating meat and whatever. He's eating whatever. Whatever they want to feed him. I don't care. But at our house, it is salads. And all these different things that have no animal product in it, no dairy, no meat. To be fair, not too shabby. Mm. Like, we've done okay for like eight days now. Ooh, God, eight days is a long time. Eight days is a long time. I, I've lost five and a half pounds. I did two weeks. I did yeah. two weeks last year. So, it, doing vegan for two weeks, I, because that was our agreement. We're going to do two weeks. Now, once this two weeks is done, I'm going to go get like a Popeye's chicken sandwich or something. Like it's something crazy. Now it's probably going to destroy me at that point. Yeah, but you'll be okay. It's but really not as bad as you think. I think if I if You're I shit a lot, but yeah, I think that if I if I watch what I'm doing and I don't eat just crap all the time, like I think this is a good way to kind of start a good habit, right? Okay. So now at the same time, I've decided to quit dipping as well. That now, you need to do. For anybody that is noticing, yes, I am dipping right now, but this is... It's mint. It's basically tea it's bag. It's a mint pouch. This is a tea bag in his mouth. Yeah, it's a... They have that? Yeah. I, 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 can we... I'm can an we, Alabama fan. Do we have any of these sound clips? But this is what I... We will. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, yeah. we need somebody who knows how to do that. So this is what I'm doing. Check. I am quitting dipping, and I'm eating vegan for right now, and we'll see. Yeah. We'll just see what happens. I feel good. I'm tired. It was last February when it was either last February or the February of four. I think it was last February when I when, when you I were went two weeks. The, yeah. When I did two weeks of, of 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 straight vegan. Now, I mean, I'm the biggest person I know. I lost thirty three pounds in those two weeks, but I also Ooh. refused to cheat, and I came to a philosophy that instead of cheating on this diet, if I put one more piece of lettuce in my mouth i'm gonna throw up or potato <laughs> well, I, or anything. you know what i had tonight i i the would just possible whopper i would just rather not eat that impossible whopper is the most unhealthy thing on the freaking planet oh yeah but you but, call yourselves healthy but that thing is shit buddy oh yeah but it doesn't have meat in it oh my god so now now we're just sticking to rules to stick to rules no this this was i had to get something quick on the way home That's i fine. didn't feel like cooking when i got home i, I so went that I when come i over went here. when i went through it i went through it legit and i i just said i won't eat and so i just went like two or three days without eating and it, it sucked it was awful but every time i tried to put something in my mouth i just wanted to throw, i mean i just want to just get nauseated i don't know what i would have thrown up because there was nothing in there's nothing there and did you drink so a lot of water? I did. I drank a, just a metric shit ton of water. <laughs> I mean, I probably drank. So the T, remember we had the guy from home for the TV twelve years ago. Yeah, yeah. So Greg, like, uh, Greg yeah, Bishop. TV twelve talked to us about you know you take your body weight and you divide it in two, and that's how many ounces of water you should drink. So that's when I was doing the vegan thing. That's what I was trying to do. Man, when when you're as big as I was, and I guess kind of am still, that's a lot of water. It's hard to eat anything when you're doing that. Good luck to you, man. You got a couple it's, of days left. Get I'm two drinking, weeks in. I'm drinking more than more than that, but I, I had completely forgotten about that. Yeah. We should probably have Greg back on. So, we, well, I mean, we need to see what he's working on. Well, he he was, got he's got a bunch of stuff going. on. I'm sure. I'm he's sure supposed, he's always yeah. working on stuff. Hey, there was something. But we we the, need to know about it before we just call him and say, "Hey, let's talk about what you're working on." That's it. I mean, unless he wants to talk about Tom, I, I mean, we can do that anytime he wants. Well, I mean, no, he was uh, he was working on something that the Westlot Pirates guys were were bringing up the other day. I forget what it was though. I've been I've been out of the loop for a long time. I'm always out of the loop. It is what it is. Uh, you want to talk sports? Sure. What I miss? Why not? Uh, well, the NBA trade deadline. We can talk about that. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me let me write down my my marker here. Uh, we've already we're already 15 minutes deep. In this getting thing. to know Chris and Gary a little bit. Yeah, I, I kind of enjoy that. So hopefully, hopefully you guys do as well. Uh, 
let's talk NBA trade deadline. Now we're like a week late on this, but um, Andre Godala gone. Good. That's totally fine. The Heat have lost every game since he's been there. Congratulations. That's a good move by you guys. That guy's a worthless shit. No, they they won last night, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they won I know, I know the, they were I know they were three oh and three their first three games with they them. uh they won at the Warriors last night. No. Good job. <laughs> well the Warriors are the worst team in the league. Exactly. Which is funny. Which makes that they're gonna, that pick, they're gonna end up getting Wiseman. It's gonna be insane. The pick that they gave the Grizzlies for this season is going to be incredible. Like it or is it a twenty twenty one? It's lottery pick? protected, I guarantee you. And they're gonna be in uh, the, I guarantee you that the pick is protected. We're not getting that pick. You're probably right. Hundred percent not getting that pick. You were probably right. Either way, okay. Um so you had some some ideas, some people no, that you wanted to talk there's about. There's one there's one person and this is this guy has nothing to do with this year's trade deadline at all. But I went through, so I was following everything while I was gone, and and I went through all of the trade deadline stuff, and I'm listening to podcasts still, and I'm, and, and and there's there's just one person that that stood out to me, and it's it's the one thing about sports that bothers me the most. Okay. It's the business of it's the business of sports and what it is. Isaiah Thomas was traded to the Clippers and immediately waived. Yeah. Now he had what a fight I, to get back into uh what Isaiah Thomas what Isaiah Thomas did in 2017 with the Celtics was one of the biggest things I've ever seen somebody do in my life. He played through injury, he played through sickness, he played through grief of losing his sister. He sacrificed his body and everything about him for the good of his team to win, to make a run. And they made a run. They made a hell of a run. They went farther than anybody thought they should have gone. They did not have the talent to make the run that they ran. Eastern Conference Final. And and he and they were this God, they were so close to winning that thing. Yeah. And he was a not a major part of it. He was the driving force on that team. He yes. was the best player on that team. He's a little guy that doesn't belong in the sport. And after that. His body has never been the same. And that was his free agent year. Yeah. And the business of sports does not allow anywhere for any team to reward somebody for what he did. His body and his game has never been the same. He never got the big payday that he deserved. Not for what he can do for the next franchise, but for what he did do. And... And I just think that I just think that's a shame. It's something that bothers me more than anything. We only judge greatness by championships, and it's something that drives me insane. Growing up, my three favorite baseball players: Nolan Ryan, never got a title; King Griffey Jr., never got a title; Tony Gwynn, never got a title. Growing up, loved Dan Marino, never got a title. Like, you watch yeah. all these guys, and not that Isaiah Thomas is anywhere close to in the legacy of his sport as those guys were in their sports. They are icons. They are legends. They are the greatest. But what he did that year, let me tell you who he reminds me of in a different sport. Nathan Avaldi for the, sec, for the Red Sox, is a, is a pitcher. He was a starter. They moved into the bullpen two years ago during the, the playoffs. He sacrificed his arm and his future for the Red Sox to win the World Series against the Dodgers. Okay? He yeah. pitched inning after inning after inning in every late game possible outcome there was. He was an absolute warrior in that game. The Red Sox rewarded him with a contract he does not deserve. One of the reasons they have to let Mookie Betts go is because they have too many bad contracts. Yeah. And I can get on the Mookie Betts thing later. But... They said, we won a title because, because this person was willing to sacrifice in a year of free agency where he could easily said, I'm not doing it because I got to get paid next year because he hadn't had a big, big contract at that yeah. point. They gave him a big contract. They overpaid him, grossly overpaid him for what they're going to get today. 
But you know what? I was okay with it the day they did it. I was going to be devastated if they let him walk. Because, and you know what? He's never been the same. He hasn't yeah. been good for the Sox since. I saw that and I thought the Sox did what I wish the Celtics would have done. Have the Celtics won a championship since then? No. Have they been close? Not really. Would well, it have only, devastated it's only the been friend? Two seasons. Like, nah, it, it's been more than two seasons. No, because right after that was Kyrie. No, no, he was he was Kyrie was a year or two before that. So it was 2016, 2017, that. and then it's now 2019, 2020 season. So I mean, I guess it's been three, four years. So 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019, and then this season. Yeah. So it's only been two. Whatever. It, it's two it, removed. It, it's just one of those things where I hate that there's nowhere in sports. And I like that we have salary caps. And I like that you can't just buy championships and, and overpay people. But man, this you're not you're not, you know, paying LeBron ninety million dollars to come to your team to try to buy a championship. This is what his, this guy did for your team has to there just has to be a way to have one guy on your roster where you could say, you know what? You can pay him over X amount of dollars over what something is and that not go against the cap. Because we know that what would be cool. But because we know what you're doing. If I was a billionaire right now, if I if I had just gross money right now, I would hire him to come do anything he wanted to do in this world. I don't care. You don't have to talk to me. To, I'm just going to give you money for what you gave me in 2017. Because I want to reward that. You know what we reward now? Load fucking management. That's what we reward now. That's what we get now. Load management. That guy, that guy wasn't about load management. He was about being a soldier, about being a warrior, about being a killer on the court, doing anything it took to sacrifice whatever he had to sacrifice to win. And here's, we don't reward that at all. Here's here's what he ended up making, right? So he had a four-year deal with the Sacramento Kings to start with. He made three hundred eighty thousand his first year, seven hundred sixty-two thousand his second year, eight eighty-four the next year. And then one point one five million that in was seventeen. Season. That was in 2014-2015. Okay, fifteen. Okay, with the Celtics. Oh, that was with the Sacramento. That's yeah, his rookie that was Sacramento. Year. So that that was his rookie deal. For That's right. Four seasons he did that. With with the Celtics, they paid him seven point two three eight million the first go round, six point nine one two million the second year. Last year there six point five eight seven million. Uh, and then he ended up making four million with the Cavs the next year, and then two point two eight million with the Lakers. Uh, they paid him. You say that's paying him? This is a league where mid level exception guys make fourteen million dollars. This was before that big salary cap bump, though. In two thousand, this is you said this is two years ago. Yeah, that's 20, bullshit. No, but his contract was the summer was of two thousand seventeen. Is when he was a free agent and they let him walk or traded him or moved yeah, him. Yeah, they, they traded him to the Cavs. You could, yeah, you could have you could have paid him. That, no, we were no. There were there were role players. There were B level bench role players making fourteen million dollars in the league at that time. Did, I watched me, it happen. Tell me this: how uh, how were Boston and he's not fans? worth that, by the way. No. <laughs> how how were Boston fans when? When they traded him, they were pretty upset. Irving. No, they were pretty upset. No, it, it's a it's a weird situation because we we're, we're getting the player that you think is going to take your champ your your team to a championship to the next level. Well, you know this guy physically can't anymore because of what he did. All right, you know he can't do it, but you hate to see him leave the organization. You hate to see him walk away. You hate losing him. So as as fans, nobody wanted to see him leave. Yeah. Right now, he's a free agent. He's available. Every every Boston Twitter page, every sports like like talk show that I follow from from Boston, all saying this is the opportunity where do we have any money? Can we go pay the guy now? Yeah. I mean, could he just come off the bench and just wave to the crowd every now and then? I mean, you, you know what he got bought out for? Like nine hundred seventeen thousand dollars. You say he got paid, man. He got he got he never no, made his, more than seven. Career. He never made more than seven million dollars a year after. After what he did, when you got when you got bogus guys, Dwight Howard sat on his can last year, played less than five games, and he got paid like fourteen million dollars. What are we talking about? I'm, I believe this guy you. killed himself. 
He uh, his career earnings are thirty four point five million, so thirty four million five hundred twenty five thousand three hundred fifty three dollars. That's nothing. Now I'm not saying he should make that in one year, but come on, man. And and or just worst case scenario, I just I hate seeing him just become the guy that gets bounced from team to team now, league to league. He's he's a part of every trade just because he makes salaries work. Well, I mean, now he's just complete free agent. Well, today so. he is, but the only reason he was involved in that trade was is to make salary Washington work. Washington had to make the salary work. Yeah. So, who who's a guy that we can give up that doesn't affect our team at all? And yeah. that sucks. There's nothing to reward a guy for for just killing himself for your team. There's nothing knowing that he'll never be the same again. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. I don't I don't I don't know how to structure that cuz any any rule that you put in to try to do that People are going to be like, oh, well, you know, Ante Lacupo is going to get this exception because he means so much to the city. Yeah, it's not because he's a great player. It's but like we're going to manipulate the rule because all we care about are championships. And I get it. They're, they mean so much. Yeah. They really do. I've experienced a lot of them being a fan of the teams that I've been. They matter. It. I just I wish there was some way to reward guys for having the seasons and careers that he's had, it may, not even career. He did this one thing, this one season. Yeah, and it was worth more than what they paid him. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't make it close to the part where they make it in, 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 against the Cavs or even to that level if he doesn't sacrifice what he sacrifices and plays through the injuries that he plays through. No, you're right. And it just bothers me. That's I saw all the trade stuff. I followed a lot. I could talk about any of it you want to talk about. When I saw his name, and then literally I saw he got weighed, I was like, oh, man, maybe he'll get a title. Go to the Clippers. And then I'm talking 20 minutes after he was traded oh, yeah, there. He was waived almost immediately. He got traded. He was waived. I was just like, man, it's just a salary dump. And I get it, and I totally understand the mechanics of it. But I, I, want, league, I want to reward. It's a harsh league. Well, it's not just that league. Hell, all the leagues are the same. They're all that way in this you know, realm you know, to, to, to that extent, I I just don't know where we go in sports to how do you reward guys for that. I don't know if there's a way to. I mean, there's there's got to be some kind of a solution, but I, I wonder if it would be more on the city as opposed to the organization. I mean, like I said, I mean, if I was thing with the Grizzlies, like, if, I, if I was some big hedge fund guy, if I, I don't know a hedge fund, whatever, if I was just some big rich you know, billionaire that lived in Boston yeah. or hell, hell, living in Memphis right now. I, you don't have to come to my city to go anywhere. What you did for me that year meant so much. What do you want to do? What do you need funding for? Here, here's, here's, here's 10, 15, 20 million dollars. Here you go. Thank you. Thank well, you. I mean, for, maybe, thank you for giving me your very best. Maybe that's something that's already going into effect. I mean, because you never know. Like, until his career is over, I doubt that. Like, we won't know exactly what happens because more than likely... It's easy for me to say that because I don't have that kind of money. But I doubt that that's happening. I mean, you never know with this stuff, man. There's a, there's some big-time Celtics fans. You think you think, you think think good of people. Not, I don't always think good of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right about that. Uh, all right, so off of Isaiah Thomas, any other moves at the trade deadline that kind of... Got you worked up. I mean, that Jay Crowder leaving, you know, not a big fan of that. I, I yeah, I was but. very upset that we had to lose him. Now, what 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 Memphis got? I say we, what Memphis got um, in uh, Justice in, Winslow in the yeah in the in the deal for for get it why just getting, you know, getting rid of Andre. Yeah, is, getting is rid everything. of him is but but bringing back Winslow like I'm a big fan of that. I I think he will fit in. Really, really. We well. need those guys to to get healthy, yeah. And we need them to play, but but losing Crowder, I was upset about that. I was I was absolutely yeah. upset about him. Yeah, I didn't and, think and he was going to be a part of the deal. Like I would have loved. But I wasn't worried about. I mean, I'm telling you, Crowder's one of those guys that you want on a team. He's going to fight for your team. Whoever he's playing for, that guy's going to war for that team. Yeah, he's a bulldog. Yes, he's he's the guy that at any moment you need somebody. To just to just drop the ball and throw hands, he's gonna do it. Yeah. The other team is not bullying you if you've got a Crowder on your team, and he also helps keep the locker. He's never ever been anything but amazing in every locker room he's ever been in. 
Now you, you're 100% and, and right. I just, I'm a fan of that guy. I like his game. Now, he's got a little, oh, he's got the ball at the end of the game. Man, I really wish he'd pass it to somebody else. But we had this, we had those things with Tony Allen. Yeah. He's like, oh, God, just pass, pass, pass. He makes this great defensive play, and then he does something crazy. He's still my favorite Grizzly of all time. And it was for the exact same reasons. Yeah. He just, he, he was the toughest guy. He gave us the identity of grit and grind. He gave us that identity of toughness. It was all work. It was all hustle. And it wasn't, I was born with this God-given ability to be miraculous on a court. I'm good at what nobody else wants to work at. Yeah. And that's what I loved about him. I see a lot of that in Crowder. And and I, I man, I wish we, he I know a, he, he was, was a free a great, agent. And I know we were going to, we probably weren't going to re-sign him anyway. So. Yeah, we, we, it was good to get something for him. Um, but I, I think... But why can't we re-sign him? Like that's what I. We, we were going to have salary cap space. That's the thing I don't understand. People say, "Well, but we were going to lose him." In the, what do you mean we we're going to lose him? When, Other teams just clamoring for him because, I like, I guess well, maybe he's that, never we're, really we're hit still, the open market. We're still moving. We're still moving young and trying to get this core set he's, up. He's not like he's thirty-five. He's Crowder's not that old, is he? Oh, he's pretty old, Crowder. man. Like I think Crowder's. I think Crowder's on up there. Let's see what a what a great question, Jay Crowder. Uh, Googling the machine. Oh, he's twenty nine years old. So he got a July birthday. He'll be thirty this year. Signed a five year, thirty five million dollar contract with the Celtics. Yeah. Let's see. That's my guy. So it wasn't like a it wasn't an insane contract. No, no, he's not. No, he's all. I mean, he the guy he reminds me of is not as good of, but he plays a different position virtually than than Tony played. Yeah, but but he reminds me a lot of Tony Allen. Like he's never going to be, you know, the star on a team. But yeah, he's a guy right. that you want on every roster, though. I mean, if you're all thirty teams should want him on their team. Yeah, I agree with that. Nobody wants to play against him. Um. I think we did get some pretty good pieces in the in return. Though. I like the Grizzlies a lot. Like Gordy that front Dang, office. Like big fan of that one. Yeah, that, the front office is. Can can we talk about smart. how unbelievable they've done since just taking Chris Wallace and putting him in a closet and saying don't touch anything. It I, Zach Kleiman. Well, for one, he's only thirty one years old. That's fine. But he has completely rebuilt. There's an article out by SB Nation right now that talks about how perfect this rebuild has gone. I mean, it is. They've seemingly, seemingly hit on almost all of them, on almost everything. Yeah. I mean, everything is turning up aces. It is. Really smart. It is strange. That guy's really smart. Also, the guy that was running it, really dumb. My opinion, my opinion, not everybody, not everybody in Memphis hates that guy. I hate that guy. They they did get lucky with John Morant, and John Morant was going to make a lot of people look really smart anyway. True, but true. All of the other moves around that, perfect. Now, like it, trading we, up to get Brandon Clark. Yeah, perfect. oh no, that uh, that was that, an incredible. That's a steal. Yeah, that is getting, the steal getting, of the draft. Getting Melton, yeah. like I mean, perfect. Like at these guys that they are putting around this core. I mean, it, it it's perfect. I mean, it's 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 like the perfect team right now. Now they're not great. They're not the best team in the NBA or anything, but they are uh, really exciting. They're really fun to watch. Yeah. They're really exciting. Jaw is made for TV. If you're not watching him, you you really need to. Can I? Is it too early or too way too early for me to take a victory lap on RJ Barrett? Right. Yeah, it's a little early. I'm, I'm getting he's ready. He's been though. out injured. I'm getting ready. Oh, oh, God, come on now. I know. It, that guy's as soft as soft can be. Come on, man. I know. Listen, no, but it, it's still like I got my running shoes on. I'm be, ready. Wait till the end of the season. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for everyone to say that because so many people are like jaw, jaw, jaw. RJ is Duke is going one two. Duke is going one two. No, no, we all good. We are good. Let's move yeah. off the NBA. All right. Let's swap off that. Uh, impressions of the XFL. I liked it. I, I didn't see any Saturday. I was maneuvering through the park for the last day and uh, the airport. 
That's airport. So. Oh, good. But did, did you? Did I watched both games Sunday. I won Moolah both games Sunday. Would have lost Moolah. I'm in full disclosure. I believe that Vegas doesn't know anything more about these teams than we know. True. And so I just went into it saying I'm going to bet the money line on both all the dogs and just assume that I'll do fine with that. I think both favorites won Saturday. Am I correct yeah, on that? Both, both favorites won. I didn't on see Saturday. the lines. Both dogs won on Sunday, which I played both of those. True. One of them plus like three forty five, three eighty five, something like that. Pretty good lick. The other one was like one fifty. It was good. Yeah. Still, still positive. Still, still did, made money. Did really well on both of those, and I just, I just work under the assumption that I was trying to figure out why the Texas team was so favored when all the rest of the lines were like a three or four point line. That was yeah, like was a really nine weird. and a half point line, and that was the big heavy favorite. Well, and so DC on Saturday was favored by nine and a half. Okay, that was a big favorite so, too. Then, and, but they also covered. So, like, I, I do, it was it all Bob Stoops. Yeah, is that the is that the reason? Because we knew Landry wasn't going to play the whole time. Right? Yeah, we, we that knew wasn't Landry a game was day decision. That wasn't the last minute thing. The, the line adjusted for that. Yeah, we we that, that, that was for all week. Bob, right? That was all Bob Stoops. I'm going to make a lot of money betting against Bob. Yeah, I did. I did in college, by the way. Yeah. I made a lot of money betting against that guy. Yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, I had to pick my spots because he was at a juggernaut school. But well, yeah, but at, anytime I mean, he played a time. anytime he played a good team, you just go the other way. Big game, Bob. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know where I got over, that nickname from. Over the last, it's like when people call me Slim, it's just like a joke. Over the last five years, uh, and this is, obviously he's been gone from Oklahoma for three years now. Yeah. But this even goes back into when he was there. Like over the past five seasons, Oklahoma seventeen and five in one possession games. It's like they they're still winning them, but you are going. To be, you're covering a lot of spreads if you're going with the dogs. Oh yeah, yeah. So. They just they just they do not blow people out that they're supposed to blow out because yeah. they're just not really well coached all the no, time. Not at all. Uh, and that's I, his job, right? That's what he does for a living. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, check. I was gonna do like I was gonna talk about an XFL preview or something for this weekend. I would have no idea how to preview. It. I mean, I think we need how many weeks is going eight? Ten weeks. I, I think we realistically need half the season to figure out what these things are. Yeah. I mean, trying after one week, there's no way. I, a, I only saw four of the teams. But, but B, I, I think it, it'd be really hard even after two or three weeks to feel like we know who. We're, can, we talk about, can we talk about L.A. firing the defensive coordinator after week one? Like, something has to have happened that we just don't have information on, right? Yeah. This can't be a pro- you weren't good at your job, and so we're firing you thing, right? No, I, I don't. I mean, it can't. Well, I mean, it can't. It could be. No, 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 there's no realistic way. Game one of a new, like, sport that we are starting, nobody can have any expectations in game one. The I only know, way it's man. for performance is if the coach was openly telling him, I want you to run this, 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 and this. And he was just blatantly disobeying what the head coach wanted. That's the only way that you could say this is performance related. I guess. I think mean, anything else, something has to have happened, and they've just done a Belichickian job of keeping it in the house. Which I'm in full support of, by the way. I, I like people that, hey, you screwed up. I'm going to fire you. I'm going to cut you. I'm going to release you. But only you and me are going to be the only people that ever know what actually happened. It, it might be if yeah. you're a problem person, going to New England's a pretty good thing. We still to this day, Bill Belichick threw a Super Bowl because something happened with him and Malcolm Brown. Butler. Butler. God Almighty, how did I miss that? I'm, anyway, um, Malcolm Butler and and they lost a Super Bowl because of of something. And, yeah. And Bill is keeping silent. Yeah. And it was to a point where Malcolm's not talking about it. No. No. He so ain't. That's the kind he of guy. He left town and didn't talk. I kind of want to work for a guy like that. It's not Because I'm not above screwing things up. That's true. I would hope that I would never do anything to get like a wrestler. Well, you, you would hope you would never do anything that would get you suspended from a Super Bowl or something well, all like that. day to day. I mean, anything could happen. We could all go crazy. It's a very valid I'm not point. A, I'm not above or better than anyone else. So That's true. That's true. Mm. <laughs> Uh, all right, so yeah, I I thought it was good. Like I, I, I went through it. yesterday when I was doing the uh, the Daily Show, like a list of all the things that I really enjoyed about it. 
Um, and so one of the things was the kickoff. Love the kickoff. I do like the kickoff a lot. Um, the replay. I think the NFL could immediately adapt several of these things and the league be better. Yes, 100%. I think the broadcast would be a thousand times better. Uh, if, if the replay reviews, yeah. like the transparent, nobody has ever done badly by being more transparent. Like, I just. I, In real time. Yeah. The NBA is transparent after the fact with that little two minute report, and yeah. everyone hates that. Yeah, it's like. Because it doesn't help anything. Yeah, it's like, why, why not just show us what you're doing during the game? Yeah, that's right. So that we know yeah. that you're not pulling this, yeah. like, you're not rigging it, right? Yeah. I like the transparency. I I like the kickoff. I you know I I like a lot. Did of you it. listen with the uh, with the volume on? Yeah, I mean, I watched I watched the game. The gambling talk was yeah a, a very nice addition. I think they understand. I mean, when you it's when you see and not that the the ringer is all gambling, but like when you see what what Barstool just went for to to pin. Yeah, is that like I think people are realizing. There's a lot of money in gambling content. Well, and and the more that you talk, like even if a game is out of hand, yes, it, this these numbers are proven. Like a game can be a four touchdown blowout, but if it's sitting right on a number, viewership stays up by like thirty yeah. percent. Like yeah. the if the big problems when you have a close line and a blowout, and they've already busted the over. Yeah, like you can't lose points, so you can't ever get back in the under. Yeah, and the so basically both numbers are completely out of hand. When all yeah. both numbers and teases are all done, that's when you turn the TV off. Yeah, that's when it's done. So that's when it's over. Um, yeah, I I think it's a good product. I I thought Fox crew did a great job. Yeah. I thought ESPN's crew did a great job. Pat McAfee going off when King had that perfect drop punt, <laughs> and that dude jumped on it. Oh god, oh, man, that was spectacular. Yeah, no, but yeah, it was just they were able to relax because yeah. it didn't have the pressure of the shield on them, and they could just have fun calling these games and talking football, and it looked like real football. The first XFL go around that was not real. That was That's, wrestling with a football. Yeah, this, this actually looks like football. This is football, and it's good. I like it. I like the two minute uh, thing that like the come from behind like. I like that in the two minutes. We're just going to stop the clock every yeah. every play. Like I, I like doing these things. I like the PATs. I like the, the oh, one point, two I, point, I, three point. The NFL needs to go to the kickoff and the PATs tomorrow. Like yes. They just need to just send a, a mass email through. We're just going to do this to the competition committee. Like yeah. We're not voting. We're, like we're doing this. Y'all cool with that? PA, cool with that? Everybody cool with that? Learn the rules? We're doing that. That's awesome. It changes the, uh, the gambling key numbers. Well, like it, oh, well, which is it now phenomenal. But see, that's something I kind of like. I don't like that that there are such fixations on key numbers in gambling. Yeah. Like, if it could be any number, then let's let the damn thing be any number. I mean, let's make it roulette, man. Yeah. Let's throw this thing out there and see what and you that's, get. That's what this is. Now, oh, obviously, yeah. with the XFL the first weekend, pretty much everybody went for one. Most of the time. Yeah, they're still feeling things out. Yeah, they're, they're trying to figure out their own teams. They've never competed against anybody other than themselves so far. Exactly. So I think eventually they will figure out, like, oh, well, rather than going for one from the two-yard line, why don't we go for three from the ten? Yeah. Because we have more space to be able to move guys in. Well, like, especially in, in, the, in, the, in the NFL world where spacing is a big deal already anyway. Yeah. Ten and in yard, this one, like you can throw, you can do two forward nothing. passes. Yeah, like, come on. Yeah, like no. <laughs> we, I, I think I'm, we're going to see excited. some. Good I things. like it. I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of it, and uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be spending my Saturdays and Sundays watching it. I enjoy it. I, uh, I actually watch quite a bit of that over college basketball. And yeah, watch, and both of the Sundays, I know both of those games were ranked higher than. Any, any college, college or, any, or it, pro basketball yeah, any game. Any sporting event. Like, that's massive. You can't say people don't want more football and then tell me that Duke UNC was this weekend and it yeah. didn't do a bigger number than one of these XFL games. That's Let's see. That You can't make that argument. I've got the ratings pulled up. No, I don't understand how ratings work still, so... Uh, this is ABC. Because and I don't ESPN know games. a soul that's ever owned a Nielsen box or let's any see. Of that stuff. 
the DC Defenders' victory over the Seattle Dragons on Saturday uh, averaged at 3.3 million viewers, peaked at over 4 million viewers. Uh, that was the then, first game of the weekend, right? That was on Saturday. That was the kickoff game. On Sunday, now this is where you know, like, okay, yeah. we got some people, right? Yeah. 2.5 million viewers is the average on Sunday. And then uh, the telecast peaked from 7.30 to 7.45 p.m. Eastern. So that's getting up for the Grammys yep. and all that kind of stuff with almost 3 million viewers. <coughs> Excuse me. 2.928 million viewers. That is absurd. So, yeah. I mean, it just it did uh, 3.4 million video views across Facebook and Twitter. Um, yeah. Vince, this McMahon, is just the Vince ESPN McMahon is pretty smart. I think he knows what he's doing. I think the first time he had a vision of something, and then he realized that was wrong. And it took him a decade to kind of figure things out. The, now, I will say this. You remember the first XFL like the back in 2000? Was it 2000 or 2001? I don't remember when it was. Either way, yes. the first telecast... Had what like fifty four million? Yeah, years. but it was but it was advertised as a spectacle. Yeah, this is not advertised as a spectacle, and it was a spectacle. Yeah, I mean they wanted to see that kickoff where you just basically it's a free for all for the football. I yeah. mean it was it was virtually a fist fight for the football. Yeah, it was a it was a scrum to start out with, and then the very first game you had somebody get injured. Yeah. on that scrum, like yeah, no. yeah. So it was it was it was this is different. I get this why is people more watched that. Yeah. I also think we were a different nation then. We Big we time. still very much love violence as much as it's not PC to say because the ratings show for all the violent things we like. Yeah. Um, but back then it was cool to like violence. And now True. you can't make that show today. No. no not, not in the slightest. Even if you time. had an audience for it, nobody would make it. No, you're right. You're right. Um, let's see. We've already been rolling 47 minutes. What, what is the over-under on how many weeks it's going to take me to learn the team names? That's what I want to know. Because I've looked at these teams. Now, I know the Over Seattle under. team. I know there's a there's a New York team and an L.A. team. I couldn't tell you who the Blazers, who the Trail. I don't know who any of these teams are. I know there's a Dragon. I know this. You and I are going to – we're going to do trivia time. Oh, God. I'd we're going to do bad. this – Next I could, week, I could be prepared for it, and I'm still going to do bad. I know it's, I know it's the DC Defenders. I didn't know that. The Seattle Dragons. I knew the Dragons. The Houston Roughnecks. The okay, I didn't know New the York Guardians. That so we got Defenders guy. and Dragon or and Guardians. Is a Defender and a Guardian the same thing? Kinda. Okay. The St. Louis Battlehawks. I think it's Battlehawks. Okay. I do like that St. Louis has a team. The Dallas Renegades. Did I already say that one? Nope. And so Texas has two teams. Yeah. Roughnecks and Renegades. So they just went full on. We're just catering to the Texas yes. Rednecks. What is what is LA? I don't know. The LA the, it's not like the Galaxy. I don't know. They just here. fired their team. Their their coach week 1 of the LA Browns. And then I'm missing another team. Oh, Tampa Bay Vipers. I knew the Tampa Bay had a team. Yeah, I, mean, I know Vipers. I know who all has a team. All right, so I'm I'm doing I didn't okay know there right was now. two Texas teams. I don't know I don't know what LA's Mascot thing. Ask is, me in but, 20 minutes. I won't know who any of those are. I, I know the dragons. I know the dragons. They breathe fire. They smoke a lot of weed. And, and just, uh, just correlations. It's green. I get it. <laughs> Things are green in Seattle. I, I mean, it just all makes sense. No, that makes, makes that's, perfect that's sense. That's the only one I got. We got a defender and a guardian who I think is a defender. Yeah. One's in D.C. and one's in New York, but that's a, you know. <sighs> yeah. So, D.C. defenders, D&D uh, and, D and okay. New York guardians and I don't know how that's going to ever work. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out one way or another. We'll do trivia time next week. We'll, we'll get these embedded in here for you. Okay. Uh, the next fun thing will be who the starting quarterback for each is. I know it wasn't Landry Jones. Nope, I knew he, he wasn't right. starting. I like betting against that. Uh, you know you know who the coach of the Roughnecks is? Is that the that's the Texas team? That's the Houston team. No. That would be June Jones. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah. I did not know that. That's that's why LA fired their defensive coordinators because June. Hey, you can't fire your DC because you just went up against an <laughs> offensive genius. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's man, that is some. 
That's a miss, right? That is yeah. some Auburn level expectation. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Come I on, agree. guys. Be better than that. LA's not even like who cares? It's not like you, it's not like you have a fan base that's that's like clamor for this guy to get canned. Hey, so that was another interesting thing about this. Like those fan bases look pretty like invested. Oh, okay, like, I, I do, so I have questions. Let's talk about this. These teams just give out like they just paper the city with tickets. I even if they did, no, smart. smart. No, no, no. Because you, you, if you're on, t- even if you're not the team doing it, if you're Fox or ESPN, are you just like saying, "Hey, we're paying y'all for watch this," but I need butts in the seats. If you're ESPN, are you passing out tickets like you're running for office? No, I think it's up to the XFL. Oh, I, oh I'm, I'm gonna bet part of the TV. I bet those TV guys are giving tickets away too. Here's my other thing. You know the super fans? Like, there's already like a dude dressed up like a wrestler with all of his like like team logo gear and stuff. Yeah. Those guys have to work for the team, right? Those no. guys have to be plants. No, 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 there's, no. There's nobody that's like, I'm a DC Defender fan and I'm here and so I'm gonna go spend the Memphis like, Express had three hundred like bucks. I guarantee you, those guys those guys work for somebody who was like, look, I'm going to throw you some gear. I need you to show up and act like a Yahoo. No, no, no. This is so. It, those can't be real. No, I've, I've got a buddy that actually is like a massive soccer fan, and they do this for uh, the Memphis 901 FC. That's fine. It's right? fine. Which is different. But you, don't, but you don't do it the first weekend you ever have a team. You can't say you're a super fan and you've never seen this thing before. No, you can because. It is something that you can grab onto first. Like it, it was like this with Grizzlies fans, right? Like there were a very select few that were. This is my city. This is my team. I don't care if we suck. Hopefully, we don't. I, oh, I'm okay but, with that. But showing up in like the 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 Raider, you know, black hole get up kind of thing, or the dog pound get up kind of thing in your first week, I just feel like. That guy was a plant. That guy was a plant. That's somebody yeah, but, that's about no. to. That's somebody that works in the mail room, and so he's some low level employee that was about to get fired. And somebody was like, "Look, if you dress up and make yourself look like a moron, here's here's all the gear. You don't have to go spend three, four hundred bucks on this crap. You got to show up and you got to get people pumped, and we won't fire you today." You are a diehard Patriots fan, right? I am. You still wouldn't go to a Patriots game all dre- like no, decked I wouldn't, in I would blue not. and whatever. I would, I would wear this, a jersey, uh, a long sleeve shirt, yeah, uh, jacket, something. But I would not wear. A, I'm thing. not a jersey guy. But that's just, that's a. Are, I'm a fat guy. I don't look good in jerseys. So but, that's, but there are some people that like to do what you're talking about. Makes them look like morons. That's okay. Maybe they just enjoy looking like morons. That's fine. I don't. Really, I shouldn't even call them morons. I don't judge them. I just think you can't be so excited about something you don't even know what it's going to be. You can't say that you love this thing. You don't even know what it is. Yeah, you've never actually seen it. I, no. I do get your point on that, but I do think there is something to that's the a dude. Newness. That's a dude that has that literally that's just. Got set up on a blind date. He's never been late in his life. And he just already knows I'm going to be in love with this girl no matter what she is because I just, I'm so desperate for something. That's a very good point. Now, you can't have that. That's a very good point. I mean, you're in D.C. You just you just had a Stanley Cup and a, and a World Series title. Come on. You can't be so starved for, for attention that you got to have can. that. You can. I think that guy's a plant. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea. If right. I owned one of these teams, I would. If I was Vince McMahon, I would absolutely have somebody. You'd have plants in in these places that they and their crew got free tickets and free gear, and they were going to be there and they were going to get on TV, and I was going to guarantee them airtime. But and they the, got the They got to get crazy. Okay. Yeah. I would absolutely make sure that was there. And if I was ESPN and Fox, I would ABC. I would absolutely have the same thing. This would be a collusion of collusions to get people excited. And I don't think that's wrong, by the way. How's no. that any different than any other PR move? I mean, you got to follow. No, I'm, 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 I support the move. I just can't believe it. My skepticism just doesn't believe that guy's real. Yeah, I mean, you might be right. You might be right. And if he is, we need to get that guy laid. We need to get him on the show. Is what we need to do. <laughs>
Okay. Let's, we, uh, we think that I want to help his life. You want to exploit him. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you think like Vince McMahon. I need more people in my life that thinks like Vince McMahon. hundred percent. Because I do not. I think it would make the show better. Oh, which in turn, well, yeah. I think, would make his life better. Mm, which would make our lives better. But his life. It's a combination. Let's, uh, we, we are not making anybody's lives better. Last topic for the evening. Okay. I think we're making people's lives better. Right? Sure. Why not? Sure, why not? Uh, topic number four on this, the MLB playoff expansion. Now, Major League Baseball writers, which are the most hardcore of the hardcore, they are the traditionalists. They do not want you to mess with their game. That's right. No matter what. They do not like this idea. The idea is this. Now, have you, have you read yeah. up on this? Yeah. Give, 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 the, give the context to everybody. Basically, the way that it would set up is the best team in each division, or in, in each conference, would automatically get a bye mm-hmm. to the divisional round. Second round of the playoffs. Second round of the playoffs. The way that it would set up, though, the other way around, is... The team with the second best record would get to choose out of the bottom three. So there would be, there's the three division winners, and then you get three wild cards. Instead of two wild cards, three wild cards. Right. So you get to choose who you would want to play. And instead of a one game play in, it's a best of three. It's a best of three. So you've got. How entertaining would this television show be? One, you've got way more teams that are going into the playoffs. I think that's important. And that's I actually, important. I'm not against that at all. Second part is, you've already got made-for-TV stuff because you've got bulletin board material right off the bat. So this past year, the Braves were the second-best team in the uh, NL, right? If they got to choose, eh, we don't really want to mess with the Mets. I mean, we don't want to do DeGrom. We don't want to do whatever. Like, that pitching staff kind of scares me. Staying away from that. Like, eh, we're, we're going to play, you know, so-and-so. We're going to play whoever would have been, the Rockies or whatever. We, And basically what it's saying is, we think you guys suck. So y'all come to Atlanta and we're going to handle y'all, right? Like, that's basically what it is. I don't, I don't, that's, this is where it loses me. I don't like that part. I'm okay with more teams getting in and making it more for more teams. The the letting a team choose its opponent part is a factor that while that is entertaining, I just I just want teams I want there to be structure and I want there to be like a definition of what's gonna happen based on how how who finishes where and and we just play the game. You've got enough storylines as it is. So you're now you're manufacturing this is really entertaining. Now you're manufacturing a storyline. The other thing I hate this does, I hate that this does, and they do it because now they're getting a shitload more playoff games. Yeah. And the playoff games rank really high. They do rate well. Yeah. Um, but they're best of three series, not best of seven, which hockey and NBA take a note. Less is more in the early rounds. Yeah. Um, nothing is better than that one game playoff, and you lose that. There I- is nothing better. Than that winner take all wild card game. Agreed, but you know as as well as anybody, uh, doing it where it's just one game. Like I never really liked it because if you just don't care with baseball, you don't play care. so many games. Don't care if you not, just have not a bad one, outing. Not one single year has that wild card game not been unbelievable. And that's true. Not one single year, American League or National League, any of the times they've done it. Not one time has that game not been an incredible baseball game to watch. I think that we're going to get a lot more incredible baseball. No, you're not. You're not. You're just not. If you make it a best of three, you're not. You're going to get a couple of games that are complete duds. It's just the way baseball goes. But you, when you have an elimination game, game one, that's it. Everybody's showing up for it, and it does not matter. Everybody's available. Every pitcher can pitch. Every hitter can hit. Every runner can run. Everybody is on deck for it. I mean, you got a valid when point. you have a best of three week game one doesn't mean shit. So you are expanding from four to seven playoff teams. Out of thirty teams, you're going to have fourteen teams make the playoffs. I'm not against that, by the way. 
that doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm very open about the fact that more teams don't bother me. I like more teams being in the race. It gives you a reason. Hopefully one day the MLB trade deadline will get to where it's fun and exciting and teams will make moves and, and spend money at the in the middle of the season to try to whatever. Make runs. Yeah. yeah. I, I it's it's I don't I don't care. The call on the shot thing is just an extra it's a gimmick to me. I don't like your professional sports. You don't need gimmicks. Yeah. That's that's my standard. I, I actually do hold these people to standards, you know, while they are television shows, this is not reality T V. That's some bull crap that that reality TV would do. Um, I don't think you need it. The I think you're right. I, the, I don't think if they, they need could it at all. somehow find a way to expand it and keep one game play ins, I'm I'd be great with it. I, but I that that one game between those teams matters so much, and it's unbel. If you're in one of those cities where that game's taking place or that team is involved in it, it's unbelievable for four hours it's better than i'll tell you this it's more exciting and keeps whole cities whole fan bases on the edge than almost any football game i've ever watched because in a football football game you can score and score and score quickly you can get down and come back And, and, and technically you can in baseball as well but it's just a different game no you're right it's just a different game that four hour window when it's the Red Sox, five, six hours, <laughs> Yankees, like it's it's a it's a much longer, but it's it's the best TV I will watch all year, one game, and I don't even care who the teams are. I mean, you, yeah, okay. I, I mean, I watched what was it, the Brewers or the Nationals this year? No, I I like the Brewers and I love the Nationals. I I like the Nationals a whole lot. I was invested, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter who the two teams are. Yeah, every year it's going to be fans. I, like it's fans it's fans. just great. And losing – baseball made a change to give us that one game, and everybody was like, one game, the game is not set up to redo, and it worked out flawlessly. Yeah. And now baseball was like, hey, you know that thing we did that was unbelievable and worked really well? Let's undo that, and let's try something else. That's the thinking that I don't understand. I think they are, they are feeling like a three-game series – one doesn't hurt the divi- like the division winners as bad and also gives you a chance for like but nobody in that seven game series, nobody in that game is a division winner no not in that one but if you're going to do it going forward like you would have matchups against division winners that's what I'm saying that's, why, that, that that's why I would be against it because you lose that because there's no way to do it without that because the benefit of adding those few extra teams doesn't outrun the the enjoyment of that one game. If you couldn't make it into that play-in game, I don't know what to tell you. Tough shit. Life well, I mean, sucks. What, so instead of like doing a buy, maybe the better way to do this would be to have like two of those elimination games to have those teams jump in to face like. I don't know how they. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do it either. We'd have to. We'd have to. Now, if you gave out. me four elimination games instead of two, I'd be all for that. I don't know how the math works. I don't know. Does that make that? Does that give us it's, sixteen it, teams in the, the playoffs? The ratings. They they need they need more television inventory though. That's that's it. That's we, what they, we lose doing, track of this because like, doing the three three games. What what it would be? It would be three three game series. So six three game series, right? Yeah. So you would have potential for 18 games, 18 playoff games in round one. Yeah. And right now you get two. Yeah. That's a that's a valid point. Yeah. And that's I get I get what they're doing. I I understand it. I my problem is this: baseball is not hurting for money. No, it's, it's not, not the NFL, but in local markets, which is all baseball matters and baseball cares about, in local markets. It kills, man. I yeah, mean, but the reason they're doing this is murders. for national. The World because Series it, doesn't get national numbers, so it doesn't matter. So you do in the, those play-in games don't get national numbers. They don't. They dominate those local markets. They dominate them. Yeah, but, but they, they also do better. Like those do for 
national. Appeal. Well, yeah, they do better than a rando game, but yeah. they don't. But they're not carrying a national weight. I mean, they're just not. No, they're not. But it, the more teams that you have, I mean, in keeping up with Kardashians will do better than that playoff game. It, it's just going to. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, whatever network TV show, and people don't even watch network TV anymore. It's going to do better than the, the play-in game now, and that's an incredible game. So it, you're not you're not getting you're not getting more viewers in a single game or in in any of the games played. You're just getting more games. So you just take the same people watching and you multiply it by the possibility of three. That's a good point. You're definitely getting it by two because you have to have two. Yeah, at least two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm not the old man curmudgeon that just doesn't like change because when they gave us a playing game, I was I was all for that, man. Well, yeah. Everybody's, oh, it changes the game. It changes baseball. That's not how baseball is. Ah, get over yourself. If you can't show up, you can't win one game, you don't deserve to win the World Series. Yeah. I'm sorry it doesn't line up with your pitching. I'm sorry that your ace pitched yesterday and, and that's it. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't want to help you. I'm sorry. Play better. Win win one time without your ace. Because if you only got one guy that can help you win a World Series, then you don't deserve to win the World Series. I agree with that. So I, I don't I don't care. And I I just I like the die it's the it's the reason the NCAA tournament is so great. Yeah. It's Wait, one it's, and done, baby. Yeah. You show Survive up, you let advance. go one night, you go home. Yeah. No, you're right. So and I wouldn't want all of baseball to be like that, but I do like I do like the one game. It is fun. I would sacrifice all the other stuff to keep the one game. That's how much it matters to me. That's interesting. We'll see what they end up doing. It's really fun. I'm uh I'm curious what they're I've, end up I've doing. been fortunate to be in a city when one of those teams were playing twice. And it was awesome. One of the years I was in Cleveland, one of the years I was in St. Louis. No, Chicago maybe. I think I was in I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. When St. Louis was, was in the wild playing. card game, yeah, it might have been St. Louis. So. I've been, I mean, I'm, you know, I like to travel in the fall, and that's when yeah. these games happen. September, it's yep. cheaper. October, but it's one of those things where, um, just being in those cities, man. I didn't care about any of those teams. I mean, I like the Indians. That's not true. That's not true at all. I like the Indians. I like the Cubs. <laughs> um, but but like it was. And it was wild, yeah, dude. It's fun. I mean, that whole place was just like everywhere you went, everybody was on edge all day. It was like, oh, you ready for a night? Ready for a night? It's like it was game seven of the World Series. Oh, yeah. And this just means if you win, you get to get into the playoffs. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a play in game. You yeah. technically didn't even make the playoffs yet. I lied. It, it wasn't, it was in Baton Rouge. Yeah. I was at the Varsity Theater. It's a good place to be. Yeah, it was not bad. And so that was like 2013. I don't know if they had the playing game in 2013. No, no, no. It was it was a playing game. How far game. did it go? Did it go back that far? Yeah, it's gone back pretty Seven far. years? I'll double check. But yeah, that it seems, was. And, and like I don't think it was time. the Cardinals. I think it was the Braves and somebody. Might have been in Atlanta one of the years I was yeah. there. Yeah. Because I don't remember. I, I don't. I usually go to Chicago in the summer, not a lot in the fall. This is, this is either, back when we were on either tour Atlanta or St. Louis. Yeah. Because we were. A little name yeah. drop there. See what he did? Just touch. Just a touch. However, back in your twenties, <clears throat> that name drop is going to get us out of here because uh, we have been rolling for an hour and ten minutes now, and I think that's pretty good. I've, I've enjoyed this one tonight. Me too. Um, go to winningcureseverything.com. Of course, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, everything else is over right there. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe, leave us a nice review, and make sure that you hit subscribe over at the YouTube. YouTube.com slash Winning Cures Everything. You can go over to Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. TunicaTravel.com is the website to go and check out. They've got great shows coming through, great steakhouses, golf courses, everything else. It's uh, starting to warm up a little bit. Might uh, might be time to get them, uh, get them clubs out, go smack some balls around a little bit. But you can find more information on that at TunicaTravel.com. We will be back again. In just a couple of days, but we're glad that Chris is back, and uh, and I'll be glad to have my microphone back. <laughs> I will say that. So we will talk to you guys again, better, better soon. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. 
If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.